Hello everyone. This is Lori from Grammy's Keepsakes and I'm glad you could join me today. We're going to make some faux pattern envelopes and some journaling cards to go in them. So let me clear this and we'll get my pattern out. And to do the envelope, you just need a piece of paper that's nine and three quarters by seven and seven eighths. And then I've written down the score marks along here. So let's go through that. So it's nine and three quarters this way. Here. and seven and seven eighths tall. And then we need our scoreboard. And you're gonna put it into the scoreboard at the nine and three quarters along the top. And you're gonna score your at four and three eighths. And then you're going to score again at eight and three quarters. So, and then you're going to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's score it on this side. Four and three eighths. And eight and three quarters, rotate it this, that way you know your pattern. I have a directional pattern and I don't want my words upside down. So I was sh trying to show you my lines, but never mind the lines. Let's just do it on this side so we don't get it upside down. And then we're gonna score. We rotate it 90 degrees to the left. We're going to score at one and one quarter inch and again at seven and one quarter. And that's all the scoring that we do. I'm sorry about that confusion. And then now we can use my lines. So what we're going to do is cut this away, cut this away this corner and this strip. And what you want to do is cut the score marks off. You don't want them. They will interfere with your folding. And here at the flap, what I did was I marked in a half an inch and I just made a line to the intersection so that and a half an inch and then taper it down. So that's how big my flap is going to be. And it does not have to be perfect. And this one I'm also going to angle it a little bit. And this one's an angle a little bit. And there we have another angle. Because this is going to fold in and this is going to fold up, now it won't bind if we have that angle cut out. And again, we want to cut it at an angle and cut that strip off. And cut the score mark off. And that's it. Now it looks like this. So then we're going to go ahead and fold on the score marks and burnish it down. And this one you're going to bring it all the way over to the edge. And it should line up with that score mark and then crease it down. And it looks like we have to do a little bit of trimming there. It wants to bind. So 
So I just took off a sliver. And now it fits better. And then to get this curve here, let's go ahead and trace one of my others. It's, you can just eyeball it, but it's um, a little over a half an inch deep. And then it's got a half an inch here and a half an inch here. And I'm going to cheat and just trace it. And when you're cutting, you move the paper, not the scissors. So now we have our little big thumb notch taken out. And this needs to be trimmed down a little bit further so it doesn't interfere with the thumb notch. And then you ink all around it. And then we're going to go ahead and put this one together. I've already got the inking done and I've just kind of messy inked in around to where it's going to show. And I'm just using some art glitter glue. And then we want to go ahead and glue here. And then we have our little coin envelope, or for us, it's going to be a pattern envelope. And then I have enlarged the Artsology pattern tickets to fit four on a page. And so I'm, and I've already cut around them and I've inked. So now we're just going to go ahead and glue. And we have our pattern envelope. So, and this one, after I get it inked up, is going to look just like that. And then I have another one here, too, that is ready to glue. And let's go ahead and make the journal cards. It's going to be fun. You get to make a mess. What I did was I used an embossing folder that I have and I embossed um, I cut some cardstock scrapbooking cardstock down to four by sixes well actually four by five and three quarters so they'll fit inside of our envelope and then I ran it through my embossing folder and then I just had some fun with some ink and um, waxes. So we're going to make a mess and hopefully my phone won't ring. I have to um, go to my daughter's house this afternoon and 
cut and install crown molding and baseboards in her kitchen, bedroom, and foyer. So, got my work cut out for me today. So I'm just using, here I've got a rose gold wax from um, Thin Studio Art Alchemy. And here I've got silver uh, from myart.com. And I've got a copper. And so I was playing with those. And Distress Ink Weathered Wood and Distress Ink Tea Dye. And so that's what I used to get these. And I was just basically playing around. And then I thought, well, maybe you want to see what I'm doing. So let's turn on the camera quick. And I just take the ink pad that itself and just run it across. Messy. You want it to look like kind of rusted old beat up metal. And we want to get just different ridges in there and we can do many layers. tea dye it's almost kind of steampunky Kind of dulls down that pink, doesn't it? Let's put a little bit more weathered wood on top of it. Here we can, this is one of the button ones. I put it in upside down, of course, so I've got this side to work with, so we'll make that work. Looks like an old vintage fabric. Trying to get the edges a little bit. Okay, let's work with some of the waxes. Grab a napkin for the fingers. Get rid of some of this other stuff so it doesn't end up a casualty. Because I get messy. And then I just stick my finger in it um, and just kind of hit the edges and then just here and there over the ridges and hit 
some of the edges a little bit. Hit some of those buttons. Kind of get in there between the buttons too and the edges. Stuff smells good through smell of vision, right? Let's see, if we get some on this one. Let's play with the copper a little bit. And see what we can do with that. Definitely looks old, doesn't it? And give it a couple more coats of the tea dye color. Richen it up a little bit. And with that wax, it's not going to stick everywhere, but it's, it's highlighting some other areas so we get an interesting look. And then I just kind of take my napkin and just rub it. So get a, just a little bit different, you know, worn and look. And it, the paper gets soft, so it's it feels really nice. And I, I just want to hit copper again on some of the edges. It looks like a patina, doesn't it, with that background color. The other side is this. This is much more fun. And for the journaling card, I, I'm going to put um, coffee dyed paper on the back so that can write on it. There. And let's play a little bit more with this one.
see what the ink will do. Let's hit it with the weathered wood again, too. And then I think a little bit of the silver. if we can get some of that pole in the center. So two completely different looks with that blue-green background and with the pinks. And every, each one is different. These were the first ones I was playing with. And this one was a lot grungier, older looking. Kind of fun, but a different look. And this paper was see, as soft as this one, but then it dried overnight. And so it's firm again. And then here's these two. They look pretty similar. This one's a little grungier, but I like them both. It's fun. Let's um, grungy this one up a little bit more. Rub that silver in a little bit. This one's got more of the copper. So let's see if I can come up with something for these buttons. This one, oh yeah. If I work the into that background, it seems to bring less of that purple. Pretty rosy. Whoa, that just totally got a lot of silver in there. I don't like the rose as much as I thought I would, but let's give it a try. And if we don't like it, we won't use it. 
There is more paper. Sure, I'm getting pretty fingers. Well, let's get rid of that one. Let's try. I'm going to live dangerous here. Black soot. I wonder what that would do. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Let's close up some of the covers. Ooh, I like that black on that silver. Burnish it in there a little bit. Well, it completely changed that paper, that's for sure. We have a purple going on. It's kind of cool. What would it look like if we did this side? This is the this is the emboss side and this is the deboss side. So it just has opposites. And if we're playing, we might as well play well. Because what's the worst that can happen? That's kind of cool. The buttons are pink. I like it. Let's um, wax it up a little bit and see what that does. Maybe I want silver. Wipe off the finger a little bit. We don't want to contaminate it too much. Get some of those edges. And then after it dries, I'm going to have to decide which side I like better to know which side to use. That could be difficult. Let's live dangerous and put some of that black on there again.
Well, that's a purpley side with a lot of silver and black. It's pretty. And then here we've got some pink. It's nice and soft, supple. I like that, the feel of the paper. Well, I'll have to figure it out, won't I, to see which one is going to work better. But um, I've got to get going on that crown molding. I guess it's has been delivered, so um, no rest for the retired. So here's the little journaling cards that we have so far. And then I'm just going to put coffee dyed paper around on the back and stitch around them and I'm going to glue the paper on so that it is adhered and then just do the decorative stitching to hold it and here's our little pockets that they're going to go into and then we can put it right into our little journal but I've got some more tag ideas and some more fun things to do. So I'll be making another video either tonight or in the morning so that we can um, add on to the fun. Thank you everybody for watching. Have a great day.